Friends, podcast number two, the here and now. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr Tony Wakeford, a former chairman of the Friends, who has been associated with the Friends governance between 2010 and 2022. This is the second of three podcasts highlighting the role and work of the Friends, who we are, what we do and how we do it. In this edition, I explain how we fulfil our public benefit role in helping to enable greater access to the historic record and to a wider audience. In the previous podcast, I highlighted some of the document-related projects that the Friends have been involved with since 1988. Over the years, our approach to unlocking the historical record has evolved and has become more applied and diverse in its nature. Whilst we still support the more traditional transcribing and cataloguing document centre projects, we have given more attention to supporting the work of the National Archives, Education and Outreach teams. For many not engaged in any kind of historical research, be it family or local history or a particular topic of interest, their access to history is through secondary sources, books and the media in various formats. One of our charitable objects is to promote a greater public awareness of the relevance of the archives to everyone and to enable greater access to a wider and more diverse audience. One of the ways in which we have done this is through supporting a range of projects that use original documents as a means of introducing the raw material of history to inspire interpretations through filmmaking, art and drama. Our financial support for education and outreach projects has enabled a wide variety of different groups from young people and those with special educational needs to care home residents, ethnic minorities and the LGBTQ community. The historical record held at the National Archives has a relevance to everyone in one form or another. Part of the public benefit remit is to promote and highlight that relevance. The topics are diverse and some examples include the First World War unit diaries, chronicling life and action on the battlefield and in the trenches, and the experiences of Indian soldiers during the war. Other projects have focused on the Reformation, Armistice, Suffragettes, Mental Health, LGTBQ History and Poor Law Correspondence. We support the Education Team's award-winning filmmaking series where young people use original documents as inspiration to draw their own interpretations and conclusions. Other projects have produced drama and radio plays and artwork. All of these projects have offered a unique insight in the historic record and what is available at the National Archives. But it is not just the contents and the information conveyed within the historic record that is important. There is also a story to tell about the record itself, its composition and origins, and the need to conserve it for future generations. Over the years we have provided assistance in various ways to support the Collection Care Department in their endeavours to keep the collection safe from the many challenges facing older documents, not least questionable but well-meaning conservation actions in the past. Elsewhere on our website you can find a schedule of the various projects that we have funded in recent years. We are always looking for new and innovative ways in which we can bring the historic record to life for the benefit of everyone. In the next and final podcast, I look into the future and some of the innovation that I've just mentioned. One of my favourite quotes comes from the foreword in the fifth volume of the Oxford History of the British Empire, where the editor, Robin Winks, points out, and I paraphrase, History is normally about three things. What happened in the past, what we think happened in the past, and what historians say happened in the past. 
our more applied approach has enabled more people to engage with the original material to gain a better historical understanding and to draw their own conclusions and express it in many different forms.